Alright, what's up guys? It's Ivan from BrainBus.com. Uh, today's tutorial is kind of like a version 2. I did a video on this two years ago, I believe. Uh, how to use the, uh, L, uh, the LED matrix uh, with the Arduino. Uh, but at the time I was using a different library and it didn't have a lot of options, wasn't very advanced. Uh, so I got a lot of questions, how do you do this, how do you do that? And with the library, it wasn't really easy to do. Uh, so today I'm using a different library that has a ton more capabilities. Uh, we're only going to use a little bit of that today. So as you can see, these are the modules that we're using. And I'm going to use this uh, slider to actually control the direction and the speed of the scrolling text that's going to appear here. Um, these modules, as you can see, I'm soldering them here. Uh, are different than the one I used in the first video. The other one, the, they had the chip at the bottom, so you couldn't uh, orient them prop, uh, easily or connect them together easily. Uh, these guys are very cool because you can just use jumpers and daisy chain a bunch of them together. So they're very easy to put together into this uh, scrolling text format. So I just built a small uh, plate here so I can bolt everything down and everything could be uh, very easy to use. So what's going to happen when I power the Arduino, it's going to start scrolling and I'll be able to change direction and speed by using the slider right here. So there you go, that's the tutorial for today. So now we're going to go and look at the code. There is a modification you need to do in the library as well for the type of module you are going to use. So I'll show you that as well. And when everything's done, we're going to come back and test it out. All right, so before we go and look at the code, um, you're going to need to edit uh, a file in the library uh, to reflect the type of modules uh, that you'll be using. So you find that in the program file x86 Arduino libraries into this one right here and into SRC folder and you go and open this one right here. So let me open it. Once you have it open you go down this is all the uh, explanation revision and all that it's pretty low so let's go up there it is. Uh, starting right here. So you have use Parola. Parola have, have their own uh, module. Now, when you want to enable a f uh, one of these, you just go here, change that zero to a one, but you can only have one uh, enabled. So we're not using that one. The first one I tried was the generic one. I said, well, probably generic comes from China, so it should work. So I put this one to one, saved the file, and uh, tried it out that way. And you can see the results right here, what uh, happened. It's scrolling, but it's scrolling from top to bottom in a weird way. Uh, these modules can be wired differently as a matrix. Uh, so you can see the result when I use the generic one. So I'm not going to use that one. Uh, the one that worked for me was this one right here, the FC16 hardware. So I put that one to a one, save the, um, the file, and as you'll see uh, in a moment, it, it works properly. So just remember to edit this file, and uh, if you're not sure, just try each one, resave the file, see if it works, and uh, if it doesn't, just come back and choose another of these uh, options. So now let's go look at the code. All right, so let's go through the code real quick. Uh, at the beginning, we're including the uh, needed libraries right here. And then we're defining some pins uh, and also maximum device. A maximum device, meaning how many modules do I have in this tutorial? I have, I have six connected uh, daisy chain together. So I have six here. And then on the first one in the chain, I'm connecting the corresponding pins here to the pins on the UNO right there. Uh, then I'm defining another one here. That's for the analog slider. Uh, that's connected to A0 because it's an analog signal. So A0 on the UNO. I have some value uh, variables here to um, hold some values. And then we're defining this uh, SPI uh, connection with uh, the value we put up here plus the maximum devices right there with this command. Another variable to hold the scroll speed, the scrolling text speed. And then at the beginning, we want to just set some, uh, some stuff like which direction it should go at the beginning. So I decided to go left here and the alignment of the characters are to the left as well. Uh, then we have the scroll pause. Scroll pause, what it means that once Parola has finished displaying uh, a message, it would pause that message there before starting scrolling again. Now, I wanted to scroll uh, without pausing, so I put zero here, but you could change that. And then I'm defining a buffer size of 75. That means 75 characters. That, that seems enough for me for a message. And then we're defining that message right here. Now in the setup, very uh, very simple. We're uh, saying the slider pin 
for the uh, analog slider is an input. And then we begin the uh, Parola library, start it. And then we're configuring it with all these variables that we set above right there. Now in the main loop, basically what we are doing, we are checking the value of the slider and adjusting the scrolling speed and the scrolling direction at the same time. So we're reading it at the beginning. And then if the slider value is bigger than 600, in my case, that means the slider is going to the left. Uh, then we say, okay, well, we want to scroll to the left. And then we set that here with this command. And then the slide scroll speed variable will be equal to a mapping of the slider value. So the slider value goes from 1023 all the way to the left to zero all the way to the right. So what I'm doing is that if it's 1023, you're going to map, you're going to say it's 15. And if it's all the way to the right, zero, it's going to be 400. Uh, the scrolling speed is inverse. So the smaller the number, the faster it will scroll. So if I'm all the way to the left at 1023, it will be 15, which is fast. And then I set the speed using this value. Now, if I'm going to the right, that means I'm getting smaller than 350. Then I say scroll to the right, set that effect and do a same mapping, but I'm reversing these values here so that now 1023 is slow and zero, meaning all the way to the right is fast. And I set the speed right there. In the last one, I'm checking if I'm in the middle. I decided that the dead zone for the middle would be uh, smaller than 600, but bigger than 350. So if that's true, that means my slider is pretty much in the middle. And now I'm just setting the scroll speed to 500, meaning it's very slow but it, it won't change the scrolling uh, left or right depending on uh, what it, it's doing at the moment. It will keep scrolling that way, but it will slow down. And then in the last one here, you say p display animate if. Uh, what that means is that if the uh, library has finished displaying the message, we're resetting it. So that means do it again. So start scrolling again. If you don't have this, it's only going to scroll once. And if you do display reset all the time, then it will never scroll. So if display animate, it means that it's finished displaying the message one time. You say, okay, well, let's do it again. And there you go. So that's the whole code. Uh, so we're going to upload that to the Uno and let's go check out the, the results right now. All right, so we just saw the code. I already uploaded it to the Uno right here uh, and I'm ready to plug it in and test it out. Uh, before I do though, keep in mind I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six of these, and I checked the power consumption on one of these uh, full on. It's 150 milliamps, uh, so all six of them together equals about 0.9 amps. And of course, the Uno cannot power, uh, cannot provide that much current. Uh, so of course, I'm using a five volt uh, external power supply to power the modules. So what I'm going to do first is power that up, and then connect the Uno. And there we go. We start scrolling from the right to the left, because since my slider is in the middle. And if I want to make it go faster to the left, I'm just pushing the slider. And there it goes a little bit faster. I'm going to wait for it to come back. There we go. All the way. Boom. That's the fastest on that side. I'm going to bring it down, slow to the middle, and then go the other way. And then it reverses all the way up to the right. And there we go. That's the fastest and back to middle or the other way back to middle here now i don't know if you notice but when i reverse let's say i reverse here you see these characters are gone they're out of memory now because they went over the boundary on that side i'm gonna wait for the b to disappear and then switch again and there we go i'm gonna come back you see that one's gone so every time you reach a boundary on that side or that side that character gets erased from memory and it will only come back when the whole message is gone. So I'm going to keep, let it go. Boom, it's gone. Then it starts over from the beginning. That's the code at the end there in the main loop, the display reset. That's what it does. It restarts the message. So we're going to go back to the main camera now and wrap things up. All right, so that'll do for today, guys. Hopefully you found this tutorial interesting and helpful. Uh, like I always say, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, thumbs up and all that good stuff. Uh, but also, if you want to replicate any of them, I uh, keep a website at brainybits.com and there you'll find pages for each one of my tutorials that I do on YouTube, most of them anyway. And there I try to give you more information. I also make a schematic so you know how to connect everything together. And if there's libraries that we use, I'll give you the links to that uh, as well over there. 
So yeah, so that's it. So uh, until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care. Thank you.